Hi, it's Dawn here, and today I'd like to introduce the Singer 306W. This is actually a great sewing machine that I think is a little um, undervalued, underestimated. Uh, here it is. I just fixed this one up, and it's going to be going to its new home. You got your uh, stitch selector here. Uh, if you put it on zero then that's neutral if you slide it anywhere above a zero this is your stitch selector going backwards so here's your reverse and here is a stitch selection going forward and uh, here is you can lock in um, so if you watch while I'm turning this that lever will move because that's locking it to the lowest one so now I won't be able to make it any lower so it's a stitch selector locking thing I don't know what you call it um, this is where you set your needle position left left center right and you'll see the needle moving as I move this and then this is your zigzag selector so if it's at zero it's going to sew straight if it's at five then that is the widest zigzag this is where you um, put your cams in right now it has this arrow cam in there and that will look like this and those were made by this machine just a little while ago so those are the little arrow design and then you have your top cover uh, you, to remove the cam you just um, unscrew and take off this big knob lift this up and slide this cam out there is a little notch there the cam has to fit into the notch that will lock it in so you just uh, pull this and then just slide out that black piece and you can replace it with another cam uh, you can buy a, cam a set of cams for not too much because it's uh, well depending but this is a flat it's just a flat plastic cam um, everything in here is metal other than those external cams for threading run it through there uh, through your tension come back down go up over your spring this is going to come under this one through your arm through these two and then the needle the needle is going to be threaded uh, the the threads going to go from front to back and the needle the flat is facing the back uh, there's this there's your needle plate and here's this screw this uh, more down to uh, give more pressure to the presser foot or more up to make it lighter you have a lot of space under your presser foot um, and here's your light and motor has been serviced as usual with all of my restorations the belt is in good condition if this was to be my main machine personally um, what I would do is uh, get a LED light bulb replace that and replace the belt um, just to have a new one um, there's nothing wrong really with this one but it is old I did replace this uh, bobbin tire already but let's see if I can show that I can't unlock it okay I'll show that with the sewing part of this because I have to use two hands to do that um, and here's your little uh, bobbin thingy that's your bobbin winder uh, guide all right so next part I'm going to show you how it sews so to use the uh, to wind a bobbin all you're going to do is unlock the the clutch and that's just hold this outer wheel and turn this inner wheel until it's now this inner wheel is now loose and now when you step on oh and of course engage the bobbin winder so just push this down so that the tire is in contact with the wheel and now when you run it you should be able to see that this is turning this is turning but your needle is not moving ok 
Okay, and then uh, once your bobbin's done, just flip this and that'll pop up or it'll do that automatically when the bobbins fall. And then you want to re-engage your clutch, which is just holding this outer wheel and tightening uh, this all the way up. Now, when you press then your uh, foot pedal, then your, your needle's going to go. The other thing I recommend for everyone to get is uh, oil and grease from the featherweight shop. The sewing machine oil you can get anywhere. I really like this container because it has um, this nice metal spout and uh, you can refill this. But the sewing machine oil is not uh, that critical and any sewing machine oil is good. You don't want to use, you know, other types of oil, but I'm not too particular about what type of um, uh, oil. But for the motor, for motor, you want to use this one, the Sew Retro Grease. And this is especially for vintage and antique sewing machines. It's sewed by the Featherweight Shop uh, over here. Featherweight Shop. And um, for the motor, this is a must-have. Now, if it's not the motor and it's just uh, regular, um, regular cold gears, then you can use uh, pretty much any type of grease, and I use TriFlow. Um, but if it's motor-related, you do want to use uh, this type of grease because of the low of the low temperature. Uh, it, it'll, it'll, it has a low melting point, uh, which is what you would need for, uh, um, for a motor setting. Now this uh, sewing machine is actually supposed to use a special type of um, bobbin case and a shorter needle. But um, I have found another bobbin case that works with it where you can, uh, it will let you use the, a normal 15 by 1 needle. Um, or you can also modify the original case as well. Um, I, I, I didn't do that. I just used the, I think it's a PR600 embroidery bobbin case, something like that. But um, that's what I have in there right now with a standard size 15 by 1 needle and uh, it, it lets me do everything and, and it works just fine. So if a special needle is what's stopping you from getting this machine, um, don't because it's very, very easy. So uh, what I do to start, um, let's see, hold, hold your top um, thread with some tension on it, drop it down and keep pulling it up as it goes and it'll pull up your lower thread. So my lower thread is black, my top thread is white, and then I'm going to take this and stick it all in between down the middle of the foot and out the back. And then I'm going to get my uh, fabric and I'm going to lower my needle into the fabric all the way down. Uh, I'm going to start with the widest or longest stitch setting, which is six. It's very quiet, very smooth, very reliable, um, just works really, really well and has beautiful stitches. I can do this. Oh, what am I doing? Oh my gosh, I'm so backwards right now. One stitch okay, let's uh, try something more in the middle for stitch length. smaller than that. All right, let's go something a little bit smaller for stitch length. This is a, about a 12. Oh, I should probably show you the speeds too. Oh, that's the other thing. I would switch to um, a new modern foot pedal because you'll find that you'll probably have better uh, variable speed so let's 
see what's the slowest. This is about the slowest I can go. So that's the slowest I can go with my foot pedal or pick up a little bit. And this is the fastest. And now I'm going to do the smallest stitch setting. which is about 30, 30 stitches per inch. Once again, I'll show you the speed. to about a 12. And show you the reverse. So you don't have to, you can change this as you go. And if you do exactly at zero, it should stay kind of hard to go right at zero. There. Um, of course, you do that too much, you're gonna you're gonna break your needle. But you can. Um, the point is, you can tack. You can tack your uh, thread, or tack your tack stitch. I think it's called. And it's just another way of securing your stitch. All right, uh, okay, so the other thing, if you bring your needle up, then I'm not sure if you can see this, but uh, this is left, the needle position is moving left, center, right. I'm gonna put it back to center, and this time I'm gonna set the, um, the zigzag to five, and I'm gonna set this to a very small stitch setting, and we're gonna uh, do a pattern. And right now, this is the little arrow pattern. So here, I'm going to go back to zero so I get a straight line. And then I'm going to now use a wider stitch setting that's going to show the widest zigzags that it does. Uh, let's do one more line of that because we kind of ran out of fabric. Oops. Let's go backwards a little. All right, so the widest uh, zigzag will be this. All right, so here are the stitches I made. We got some beautiful stitches here. This is where I did a back, back stitch and a tack. Your longest stitch setting, your smallest stitch settings, and uh, your medium stitch settings. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to look at the very uh, nice spacing and individual stitches. Then this is the widest zigzag. And the widest zigzag is where if there's going to be a problem, you will see it at the white, widest zigzag setting. And then this is how that arrow is supposed to look. Where's my finger? Up here. This is how that arrow design is supposed to look. So when you do this widest one, it's, it's going to look funky because that's not how um, what it's designed really to do. But you can do it. So that's the arrow. And that's a very pretty stitch. And here is the back, so you can see that it matches with the front, which means that the tension is great. And here's where I did the multiple uh, reverses. So excellent stitches and great 
easy to use machine. Oh, let me show you one other thing. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at um, thick materials. Uh, I wanted to show that as well. Whoa. All right, so these stitches were done on um, four, four layers of cloth. So here's one, two, and then there's uh, three, four here. All right, so this, this was all done on four layers. And that is what this is, four, four layers here. So I'm going to fold that in half, um, and then I'm going to fold that in half again. All right, so this is very thick. So uh, all done with the thickness testing. <clears throat> I think this is what 16 layers of um, of cloth, and it sews through that beautifully. The white is what you're looking for. Look at the spacing on that. So the white, and back here that's the black, and it all matches up just fine. These, it was just three lines of white. So uh, there you go. Excellent machine. And thanks for watching. Bye, guys.